Welcome back to Cover Slaves, the show where we play Warhammer 40k, and there's nothing wrong with that. In nothing at all. No. So today we're going to be doing a mission from our forthcoming tournament format. It is the fourth mission in that format with uh, three right. objectives. And uh, what's interesting about this format is through the four missions we cycle through uh, what actually ends up getting objective secured. So troops are only OS in one of these four missions, being the first one. In this particular mission, only elites are OS. That's right. So that's going to be fun. I have three elites. Do you? I have two. Cool. Uh, the interesting thing is we're allowing assassins. Uh, Jay has whipped up a really cool brain bug assassin. Tell us about it, Jay. Well, uh, if you're familiar with the Duke Nukem series, I had a lot of inspiration from the Octo Brains. I basically wanted some sort of psychic floating brain monster with like tech jammed into him. And he's like a mercenary or something, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. He's like, he just wants to eat brains and he wants to he eat... He wants souls. He wants souls. Warp energy. Yeah, so he's struck up some kind of deal with the with the Tau, I guess. And, you know. and, and that's counting as a Kalexis assassin. As a Kalexis assassin. Um, I as well will have a Kalexis assassin, so that'll be fun. I'm doing a cool like Mechanicus take on it, because I just like the model a lot. Um, what else can we say? Uh, cover the basics pretty much. Um, one other thing is we're bringing back the ability for units to charge out of reserves. So both your own table edge reserves and units outflanking can actually charge. So that's, that's a special rule for all four missions and that's really going to shape things up. I think. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty refreshing. Oh yeah. yeah. And the nice part too is because there's so few VPs in play, uh, when you have someone like Cypher or, or uh, the Assassins who actually if they kill a Warlord will get an extra VP for it, you know, there's some interesting little tiebreakers people might yeah. not see coming, so yeah. it's good to study up on that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, without further ado, we will get on to our <laughs> lengthy and annoying terrain discussion and our armies. So time for our lengthy uh, discussion of the terrain. So the rules are as follows, starting over on this corner here. So right here we have a ruin. Uh, pretty simple, you can't go through the walls, but you can go through the doors. Uh, if someone's on the other side of the door, you can block it off. Uh, if you're behind cover, you're going to be getting a 4 plus save, but it's not magic terrain. If someone's shooting you, say, from this side, you won't be getting cover. Uh, this guy over here, wrecked building, will also be a rune. No surprises here, no surprises there. Most things are runes on the board, uh, which would entail a 4 plus save. These guys, the low cover, 5 plus saves. They're also what we call destructible, so if a monstrous creature were to move through or land on it, you just pull it because they're immune. If a tank or something else, you take their dangerous. If they fail it, you leave it there. If they pass, you move right through, pick it up. Um, the statues you're seeing will just be impassable terrain. They'll also provide a 4 plus cover save. We've got some wrecks on the board. Right over here, we've got a tank wreck. There, we got a chimera wreck. And in this far corner over here, we've got another wreck. Basically, they're destructible. They have the same armor they always do. So in this case, you know, leaving Russ's 14, 13, 10, or 11. Chimera would be 12, 10, 10, and uh, any glance or pen, it just blows up. Straight up, you just remove it, do a you know, distance result, and it hits everybody. Uh, we have also an intact vehicle over here. We sometimes play that as destructible, but for this purpose, it'll just be impassable, 4+. plus. Yeah, so that more or less covers everything. We did something a little interesting. We, uh, we both had an allotment of sandbags, and we uh, rolled off and took turns placing them all over the board. So that was kind of fun. It added an extra little element. And now we get some nice low cover into the mix. Um, I think the only thing left that I have not really mentioned is the trees over here. These guys are going to be 5 plus area terrain. They're a little more restrictive than normal area terrain. The trees are still essentially impassable to vehicles and stuff because we can't pull them off. So, you know, if your you know, unit can fit inside, you're getting a cover save. But realistically, you need experiment for, experiment for bigger stuff like a uh, Dreadnought or a Riptide or something. Anyway, that more or less covers everything. Um, we will go on to talk about our armies and stuff, and then we'll see you at the start of the game. Here is my 1650 talent by army. We'll start with my warlord. He's, uh, his, well, his warlord trait is Master of Ambush. He's got all the, the good stuff for the commander. He's got the honor gauntlet, the big suit. He's got the uh, you know shield, uh, fill and pain kind of stuff. Uh, right next to him is my Culexis Assassin. He's a Count Saz model. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, we've got, uh, going on to troops, we've got uh, 10 crew with 5 hounds, there's 6 uh, fire warriors with carbines and EMP and a devil fish, there's uh, 2 pod sides with interceptor, and another squad of 1 of the same, then we have 2 tetras in a squadron, 2 piranhas in a squadron, 2 identical riptides with interceptor and the good stuff, long strike with the smart missiles, some other stuff. Uh, Barracuda with a disruption pod. And that is my whole army. I have my 1650 point Ultramarines list with the Ultramarines traits. Uh, up front here is my Warlord, Tigerius, uh, with a uh, good old Storm of Fire. 
for his warlord to trade. Uh, right next to him is my Count as Collexus Assassin. I'm using a cool little Mechanicus dude. Uh, over here we have a five-man combat squad with a melta gun, and the sergeant has a combi melta. Next to them we have uh, Devastator Centurions with the usual cynical loadout being Rav Cannons and of course uh, missiles. Right here we got a Thunderfire Cannon. Next to it is a lone fast attack pod. Uh, behind that is my other troop choice being five scouts with uh, close combat weapons and the sergeant's got a melted bomb. And they're in a storm. Uh, next to that is a Dimos Pattern Forge World Vindicator Tank Destroyer and I've given it the legacy uh, Doom of something or other so it gives it fearless to guys within six inches and it has Tank Hunter. Behind them is a Fast Attack Razorback with Laz Plaz. Over there is an Ironclad Dreadnought with a Heavy Flamer Chain Fist Melty Gun in a pod. And beside that is my Storm Talon with Scammers. And last but certainly not least is a Command Squad with three Melty Guns and two Plasma Guns. And they're in a pod with a Locator Beacon and the Missiles. So yeah, that is my 1650 point Death Watch Count as Ultramarine list. So Tau won the roll for uh, deployment. So I'm starting right here. We've got Long Strike. Uh, deployed behind the Devilfish with the six Fire Warriors in it. We've got the single broadside deployed normally next to the objective. We've got two Tetras that deployed there. Then using my Warlord tree, I have two Riptides here that infiltrated. Moving along, we have the Culexus Assassin that infiltrated. And these two broadsides with the Commander infiltrated. So I will be attempting to go first. So uh, Ben will be trying to steal the initiative, and it's worth knowing that Night Fight is in effect. We did not have to roll for it. So we'll see you for reserves. Okay, so here we've got the two Piranhas, which are just going to be coming off my table edge. There's a reserve, it's normal. We have the Flyer, it's obviously in reserve. And finally, we have the squad of Kroot, which will be outflanking. Ultramarines Death Watch deployment down here. Uh, I've got my Razorback kind of behind this tank, waiting for some Kroot. Back here near the objective, I've got my Thunderfire Cannon. Next to it is my uh, Dimos Pattern Vindicator Tank Destroyer. Uh, you can't really see them as well, but I've got Tiggy hidden down here, and his three Devastator Centurions are out there on the second level of the building. And this building in particular, I've reinforced using the uh, Tech Priest ability from the Thunderfire. Uh, moving on, I infiltrated over here with uh, these guys. Managed to balance there, so they were uh, pretty much just spent out there to uh, keep infiltrators out of that flank. and. Yeah, that's more or less it. I'm going to try and steal the initiative, uh, but we'll go on to my reserves. All right, so in reserves, I've got my Calexus Assassin just coming on from his board edge. Uh, I've got these guys here. Uh, they're going to be coming down turn one. I've got this Ironclad is going to be coming down, probably not turn one, so it won't be turn one. Uh, Storm Talon coming off edges, you know, normal reserves. And then these guys also coming down turn one. That's the command squad. So uh, we forgot to do our scout move, so starting over there. Jay moved his uh, speeders from here to there. And uh, I also moved my speeder from up here to 12 inches of that redeployment. So now I'm going to attempt to steal the initiative live. Oh, so here we go. Wish me luck, internet. No. Wah, 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 wah. Sad face. <laughs> Here we are at the end of tab turn one. So I'm going to start with these two Riptides, use their Nova Charge, and combined with Long Strike, fired on the uh, Vindicator over there, the Relic Vindicator, causing three glancing hits, so a glance per model. There we go, not bad. Uh, the Tetris assisted with that, I think, on the Riptides. Broadside back here, he's just chilling, he's not really doing anything, he's not in range of anything right now. Commander moved from these broadsides over here, and the devilfish moved up, disgorging its drones. The drones are, of course, following up with Mr. Octobrain over there, who uses Animus Speculum to cause a wound to one of the uh, Devastator Centurions, and then ran a little closer. And then finally, over here we have these two broadsides, which fired their smart missiles indirectly, causing the last wound to the Devastator Centurion. So that is the end of my turn. We'll see you at the end of Space Marine turn one. So it is the end of Death Watch, aka Ultramarines turn one, starting over here. Uh, this guy bootled up 12, 18 inches, I think, more or less to be there. Uh, Tigerius and the boys kind of moved back a little bit, getting line of sight through a door here towards the Psyker. 
him as well. Tajirus just had to get out the 12 inches from the Psyker because he was sucking up his warp charge. The Storm moved six, dislodged dudes, and then hopped over this with its uh, fast move there. Guys got out, fired their stuff here, didn't have any luck. Over here, we got from reserves. Uh, these guys took shots here again, didn't get anything done, but they did land on the objective, so that's good. Moving on down, uh, I'm sorry, back over to Thunderfire. Engaged all the way over here with that guy. Got a bunch of hits doing one wound. He passed another save, and I had rending, which would help him. These guys took shots at Longstrike, but because he's a dick, he passed all of his cover saves. I only did a single hull point to him. The pod fired its missiles at here, scattered into there. Uh, didn't do anything there. That's pretty much it. I forgot to activate my uh, tactical trait, so I wasn't rolling any shooting. So that was a huge, huge mistake on my part. So we'll see at the end of Tau turn two. Okay, so this is the end of Tau turn two. So we'll start right here. We have uh, the commander moving forward and attacking these guys. He killed uh, two with his, one with his uh, grenade launcher thing and one with his melta. Uh, broadside here fired, didn't do any damage. Long strike sort of skedaddled, went over here with these broadsides. These broadsides snap fired at what was left of this squad here, which was blown apart by the animus speculum of the, uh, the brain bug. And then we've got the uh, devil fish sort of scooting on over here, getting in cover. Barracuda came on, attacked and destroyed the squad of scouts that was there. With a single drone moving up. These two riptides activated their shields and are now moving forward. They attacked, one of them shot at the guys back there, while the other one shot and did a wound with the help of the Tetras onto the Devastator Centurion. Lastly, we've got my brain bug guy, who, after shooting the drop pod contents, ran around the corner and he's now just freaking everyone out, though, standing right there, just being real creepy. So that is the end of Tau turn two. We'll see you at the end of Space Marine turn two. What is the end of Ultramarines, aka Death Watch turn two? Starting over here. I moved my razor back about six inches to take a pot shot at Jay Psyker, who's over here. My plane came in from reserve, booted up that way, and shot at Jay's Devilfish in the ruin, causing a hell point. Moving down over here, uh, basically I took a pot shot or at him from the pod, didn't do anything. Tigerius is kind of hiding in the building area, he separated off from his unit. His unit moved here and was twin linked thanks to my uh, Devastator Doctrine, which I remember this turn. Fired on the front Riptide, causing three uh, wounds. Uh, Tigerist, with the 12 inch thing, used his buff for the uh, Thunderfire, giving it rending, which then engaged this Riptide, hitting both, causing one wound here. My pod with my uh, Ironclad came down over here, he moved out six and engaged with uh, this broadside doing nothing. The pod fired doing nothing and the other one fired doing nothing. The entire unit engaged uh, with uh, Jason's commander doing nothing. So yeah, only thing left in reserve is my Kalexis Assassin. We'll see you at the end of Tau Turn 3. Okay, so this is the end of Tau Turn 3. Uh, so we're going to start over here. So we got the Piranhas that came on, discords their drones, they shot up the Dreadnought. I believe they did like a hull point or so. Uh, the commander and long strike uh, fired, killing the the vehicle, the dreadnought. Uh, the pods are still intact. Uh, the guys that came out of the pods were uh, destroyed by the barracuda and the broadside. The broadside's here, fired on this pod, having no effect. The fire warriors from the devilfish disgorged out here through an EP grenade, no effect. Uh, moving along, over here we have the uh, Culexis. He eliminated the last of the uh, Devastator Centurions and moved towards the uh, Thunderfire. Probably should have assaulted, but I ran instead because I uh, forgot. And then we have the two Riptides with their shields up, moving forward. And we have the Piranhas, or sorry, the Tetras behind them. And that is it for my turn three. We'll see you at the end of Space Marine turn three. 
That was the end of Ultramarines, aka Death Watch, turn three. Starting over here, I uh, pivoted my Razorback slightly and engaged the uh, vehicle that's in the room there, underneath. But uh, Jason was successful in uh, stopping that. Uh, the Storm Talon went to hover mode, moved over here, got uh, rending from uh, Tiggy, so all his shots were running, not just the uh, normal assault cannons. Fired here and uh, ended up taking Buddy out, so that was good. Uh, the speeder hopped from over here and engaged with Jay's Fire Warriors on the objective, but didn't have much luck there. T just stayed huddled in a corner. Uh, my <laughs> my Calaxes came in from reserves, and of course in this format you can charge, so engaged with the Reptile that was here, and then of course ended up charging there. Uh, didn't cause any wounds, but neither did Jay, so we were locked. Uh, Thunderfire fired again at these guys, but unfortunately whiffs going wide over there. Uh, this pod fired its missiles at that group of four drones, but it scattered wide. And this pod, champion of the turn, fired its stone bolter, hitting with one uh, on the broadside that was there, and Jay failed his two plus, and it caused the final wound. So, so far, so good. Uh, a lot of it's going to come down to those last couple turns. We'll see at the end of Tau Turn 4. This is the end of Tau Turn 4. So we're going to start right here. So I had the uh, commander destroy one of the drop pods with his melty gun. Long strike attempted a shot on the other one using the Tetra's marker lights to ignore cover. I did a hull point there and blew off the storm bolter. The piranhas moved up using their full speed to get over here. Broadsides broad size move over, uh, snap firing shooting at the storm that was here, causing it to explode. Uh, the fire warriors, whom I forgot to assault with, uh, just sort of st stood there, uh, threw an EMP grenade, didn't hit it. Double fish moved over to uh, sort of cover them. Oh, we should have a whole point. The Kroot finally came in, and they fired and glanced this vehicle to death. The Culexus assassin fired his Animus Speculum, killing Tigerius affording me an extra victory point on top of uh, Warlord, and then move to assault the Thunderfire Cannon. The remaining Riptide is in close combat with the other Assassin. Neither side has done any damage to each other, interestingly enough. So that is the end of my turn. We'll see you at the end of Space Marine Turn 4. This is the end of Ultramarines, aka Death Watch, Turn 4, starting over here. Uh, this combat, basically. Uh, we both whiffed. So Jay passed his invul save, not dying. Going over here, moved up on him, this guy, uh, shot all the uh, fire warriors, killed all of them with the assist from the pod. So that's cool. And then this combat back over here, uh, we both whiffed. So we're just continuing that. So that's the end of my turn four. We'll see at the end of tab turn five. This is the end of tab turn five. So starting here, commander shot, did a hull point, Assaulted with his strength and attack. Roll the one, didn't do anything. So this drop pod is still there, contesting that objective. Long strike over here, fired and destroyed the other pod. The vehicles moved to capture that objective. Broadsides literally had no targets to shoot at. Uh, Barracuda came back on from ongoing reserves, shot down his aircraft. Uh, moving around here, the Kroot moved on to help. Uh, the Culexus Assassin assault the Thunderfire and actually managed to succeed and just pure numbers getting his armor saves out. Uh, the Tetras moved over here to try to sort of block and contest, get line breaker, that sort of thing. Finally, my Riptide went down to the mighty Culexus from the other team. So, yes, that was the end of Tau turn five. We'll see you at the end of Marine turn five. Okay, so it's the end of Death Watch AK Ultramarines turn five and thus the end of the game. Over here, I really had one unit left who uh, ran up here, managed to get a six for difficult terrain, shot and blew up one of Jason's, uh, what are they called? Tetras. Uh, and then because that was in the uh, uh, psychic phase, I then moved through a psych grenade and charged this guy. And I did two wounds to him, but he ended up killing me in combat because he rolled sixes. So I would have been contesting that, which would have been hilarious because right now Elite have OS. But unfortunately not, so that's 3 VP for Jay there. 
He killed my warlord with with his assassins. He got TVP from that. He got first blood, so that's six. Uh, he had linebreaker as well, and then over here he's holding another objective, so that's ten for J. I have both linebreaker and one objective because that is an elite, thus OS pod, and uh, I'm on the objective there. So that is a score of ten VP for the Tau to four VP for the Death Watch, aka Ultramarines. So yeah, fun game. Uh, we'll see you at the post game show. Welcome back to the post game show. As always, I'm Cravelsworth, and I'm joined by Anubis. Yep. So yeah, we just played our 1650 point game for the format we're working on. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. It was really, really fun. What was your most valuable player? <sighs> I'd have to say the Culexus Assassin. Well, why don't you show us all? Oh, I have him right here. Oh, you prepared it earlier. Oh. oh. This one we prepared earlier. <laughs> So he was a lot of fun. I mean, aside from the modeling, which was a total blast, um, he really helped me just cause confusion and disarray and get him would. close. And it was really annoying to have him close to Tiggy. Did he, not like that. The, the, the Animus Speculum is fantastic. It's really good shooting. I mean, even from a Tau player, this is really, really awesome. Like I'm just picturing Tigerius back in the corner, like, oh fuck! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's all going Yeah, on. that was the best. <laughs> I got Tigerius back in the corner, like oh. curling into a little ball. And uh, in the tournament, we're allowing their command benefit because they're they're a formation, which whatever. So you got the extra VP for That's getting right. Warlord, which yep. is sweet. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to get him close combat. You just shot. No, him I just blasted that guy while he was <laughs> huddled huddled in the corner. And oh. here. It's fantastic. So Couldn't have gone any better. Yeah. yeah. And then he went on to blow up even more guys. I think he, he shot up your Devastator Centurions. He was he was definitely an MVP. He fucked everything up. Yeah, he, he stopped the Thunderfire from shooting, which helped the, the crew. I don't know. It was, he's, a, he's a soul drinking pimp. That was <laughs> motherfucking P I M P. <laughs> soul drinking pimp. I love it. Yeah. He just scours the universe just looking for like warp charges to drink. Just know? give him a pimp hat. Yeah. You still have to go with the name for this guy. I do. I'll come up with something. Don't you worry, guys. With that said, what is your epic fail? Hard question considering. <laughs> um, who, who let you down? You know what? Probably, I want to say the, maybe the gun drone squad off the piranhas. They didn't really do anything. I, I ditched them. Really unit. I ditched them out. Well, uh, you know, that's just because. So the piranhas. The piranhas yeah. disappointed you. The piranhas themselves took an objective, which was okay. But I think it was more of my misuse of them. Maybe I should have had them. Like in fairness, they 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 did. Very much aid in putting an end to him. They did. They did. I guess the drones did do that, but the Piranhas never fired a they shot. They didn't so. put the final shot, but they, they put a couple of points, I think, or at least one. I guess what I want to say is they were the least useful to me throughout the, the course of the game. The and, the, and thus epic fail? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. I could also see the one. I was gonna say. Side. I was gonna say actually. Also, that one broadside. He fired at a couple things. He didn't do very well with the reroll. He yeah. Which he, is odd for and you. And then he got you know blown up or he got killed with an armor mm -hmm. save. I mean, yeah, you know. So he, he botched a couple armor saves. So yeah, two up armor saves. So you think it's him then? Yeah, we'll make it him. We'll make it the single broadside. Gravelsworth, what was your MVP? Why well, thank you, Gravelsworth. <laughs> I I as well will have to go with my Alexis Assassin. Mm. He uh, came in from my edge. Jay forgot that he was coming, and yep. uh, I, I I only killed the one Riptide, right? But I helped with the other one. Uh, the other Riptide died from the plane, but the final one was there. Yes, the rending. Yeah. yeah, it felt right though. Yeah, and then of course killing just the one Riptide was fucking great. He so did it with instant death, and he still had four wounds. I I love too that he managed to because it's a, it's a shooting a psychic shooting thing, so like it has no effect on the causality of the shooting phase. I managed to blow up that one uh, oh, the tetra. tetra. Just yeah. to get it out of my way yeah. so I could charge your dude. Yeah. No, he he was fucking cool. killed me. But it was so close, man. It was so close. If yeah. you had failed that one, it would have been lights out. So I definitely my MVP was the Lexus uh, Assassin because he's just really cool. Mm -hmm. And I like my model form quite a bit. Yeah. I like the idea like a mechanicus assassin who just gives no Demos fucks. your brain. <laughs> I will drink your warp charge yeah. and your milkshake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Epic fail will go to, jeez, uh, to me, because <laughs> I forgot to use uh, uh, the tactical trait the first turn, so like the units that dropped were not in any way twin link or rerolling ones, so that... Could have helped taking out my Kulexes. It, it could have made a huge difference on various fronts. I could have maybe killed Long Strike or crippled them more or mobilized them or something. Yeah. Yeah. One whole point was not enough for me yeah. I was doing. 
Uh, the other thing was, of course, the guys who dropped here. I, if I was twin link, I might have risked going for the tank instead of him. Who knows? But I, either way, it would have helped on either target. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if I had to pick a unit, that was disappointing. Um, let's go with Tetris. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gotta get his shit together. <laughs> he, he, he crawled into a corner, he, shot himself, and got shot up by Just, uh, yeah. what's it? Caiaphas came to the whole thing, basically. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cowardly uh, psyker. Mm -hmm. You being within 12 early on was quite quite the it, pickle, so. Yeah. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, what were your thoughts on the overall game? It was a ton of fun. Um, I don't think I'd change, I'm going to change my list if I do go to this tournament, I, which I probably will. I will probably take an identical list to this. I can't see myself changing too much. It's a phenomenal list. The actual game, the terrain was solid. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the format was great. Uh, I do enjoy playing uh, table quarters. Yes. Yeah. It's that, it's much better than trying to fucking yeah. do the triangle yeah. after you have terrain. Well, you know, while in Vanguard, I do appreciate having you know the space to spread out. It's weird. You need you need the, the yeah. What do you call it the uh, you, you need a laser level the chimera yeah. the chimera method where you put the the yeah string string down before yes that. yeah. Um, I, I like that. I like that we do that. I, I really I, the assaulting from the flanks, like even as a top layer, I think that's great. I, mean, I think we're just gonna keep that. I think we should. I think that's our new house rule. That is bring awesome. it back to fifth. That yeah is great. We should. Um, what, what do you think of assaulting from transports? that are stationary. No, that's too far. Okay, there we go. My my reason being is getting that, stuff then, done. No, no, but look, if I can help flank in a rhino, get out and then charge. It's too dumb. Yeah. Um, especially if, you, as someone who has all the intercept in the world, you'd be pissed off if that was a viable tactic because all of a sudden you have to put everything on the fucking rhino. Well, you have to get it out to the assault and still get to shoot that unit, right? Sure, but I'm just saying I'm going to come in, oh yeah, he has intercept on this flank, I just won't get out this turn. Yeah, I suppose. I know, yeah, plus, yeah, you're yeah. basically giving them assault vehicle, then you blow me up against all assault, so. <laughs> you get yeah. what I'm saying? You blow yeah. me up, okay, didn't lose all my guys in the turn that I'm using them. And then assault. So. Sure, yeah, I guess uh, yeah, that was a really good issue. Yeah. No, I think uh, it, it's fine. I mean, you're the only person who has a lot of Interceptor to begin with. 30K is doing it a lot more intelligently. It's kind of, as an example, one of the, one of the pieces was like, okay, you can intercept, but, but it's only against things that come in from Deep Strike. So it's like interesting. And within a certain makes range. sense. Yeah, it's like 18 inches. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think with most situations, most people don't have any intercept, so it's gonna be very interesting. I just, I hate people feeling safe. Yeah. And I, I like this idea of, no, no, maybe I'll go a bit more towards the center, because yeah. God knows what's gonna come out of that. Or even your opponent's stable edge. Yeah. yeah. That too, especially. Yeah, um, I learned that. Yeah, I, no, I was very happy that I put yeah. mine in reserve, because yeah. anywhere on this edge was huge. Mm. I didn't want to outflag him, so. Mm. But yeah, uh, uh, I, I think having, the rule we've called it fear of the flanks and basically all it does is in the four scenarios we have um uh, all units coming in as long as they're not coming in from deep strike from reserve or out flank can charge unless of course they're in a transport so it's a simple rule we've sort of tacked it onto the missions as opposed to trying to go in and fuck with the brb so it works well for Which that purpose works well because you're saying you know hey we're playing this mission perfect in this mission we have this it's like a custom map in a video game. It's the same thing we've done for yeah. uh, the first mission. Troop score is normal with OS, yada yada. But the subsequent three missions will have a rule where it's called uh, unlikely, unlikely valor. valor. But what that means essentially is, in whatever mission, it'll tell you whether it's fast attack, elite, or uh, uh, heavy. I like that name. By and uh, well, I like it too because it's sort unlikely of valor. Oh, we'll with the right? tanks. Yeah, I just it's good. Yeah, but the basic idea is what it does is, although you're shifting what has OS, troops then would not have OS. Everything still scores, That's right. so the game is still kind of on easy mode from that perspective. It's still pretty different from 30k. And there's things you have to watch out for. It changes the way the game plays. I had an objective taken from me from a drop pod because it was elites. I completely forgot about the dedicated transport thing. You know, you just think it's the stuff coming out of the transport that you have to worry about. No, it's, you know... I don't love, I don't love dedicated as getting OS. It was just the easiest way to not have anyone bitch at me because... Pods don't certainly don't need it, but I look to the the humble Dark Eldar and Orcs who, let's be honest, they pay a lot for transports that are fucking hot garbage in some respects. <laughs> Dark Eldar are a bit better, but the Orc humble, the humble yeah. truck, you know, yeah, like yeah, it yeah, really yeah. sucks for what you have to pay for it. Yes. So it's it's nice to give them a little leg up from time to time. Agreed. Um, pretty much covered the gist of the game. I don't have a date at all for this tournament. It's really just a concept. Uh, 
coming together. Conceptualizing. Conceptualizing. Um, uh, we're not being super restrictive, but we don't want a bunch of crazy buffing or anything. So for now, allies are just out. But you do have the ability, anyone has the ability to take a Psyker. And the Psyker counts... Right, assassin. Uh, sorry, Assassin. Not Psyker. Assassin. Yeah, psychic Assassin. Psychic Assassin. And the idea is that the Assassins are no longer just operatives of the Imperium. They're great for count as, so they, they treat everyone as an ally of convenience. Mm -hmm. There's no buffing, there's no bullshit, but at the same time, Jay was inspired, made a really cool count as yeah. assassin, and that was the whole idea. Make if someone's bringing in space wolves, make a cool space sure. wolf, and then he's call like him the, or whatever. He's right the right coolest there. scout in all of the land, and he's so awesome. You know, make let your mind go crazy, sure. and make something cool, and it's it's a blast. I mean, I like it. The other thing we were doing is allowing a, a zero to two torch roll. So again, if someone wants to take something for their codex specifically from torch roll, they can do that. That's why I had my Tetris together. Yeah. yeah. So I had two, you know, Tetra, Barracuda. It works. I think two is a good limit. I think so. Yeah. I think it's going to keep you from digging too much craziness, but yeah. hopefully allow them a little bit something. A little sprinkling. That's what you want. We're going to maybe eventually open up allies. The problem is always with the allies, short. I'm actually just going to make mm. sure we're still recording. So yeah, I just made sure we're still rolling. Uh, but we're doing, um, we're thinking of doing, or at least allowing allies, but as again, the allies chart's a mess. Um, it's super fluffy, which... It's fine. Uh, it's just I almost feel like there should be two allies charts: one for competitive play, yes, and one for fluff. One that looks fluff. at it completely objectively for yeah. balance. Doesn't even think, uh, you know, Necrons with Tau, which is the case actually right now. Yeah. But you know, whatever. And the other one should be the one that I guess makes sense fluff wise. I, I agree. Right now, what we have is it is it it sort of makes sense fluff wise, but it is very strong. Basically, all the Imperium is one big codex. And uh, that kind of is moving away from the older one where they did take in some of the intricacies of, well, this chapter doesn't like that chapter. Yeah. Or, you know, that was gone is that, where everyone is basically now for Imperial as a giant faction. And it's not really fair because you also add to that all the synergistic stuff with all the USRs and all the buffing and all the psychic powers and yada, yada, yada. It's just not fair to the, you know, Xenos out there. It's not really fair to the heretics out there. It's true. And most people are, are doing pretty cynical things, let's be honest. Movies it's very rarely really for seeing. Orcs could probably, you know, benefit from them, but I don't think they have any. And you can already say it's demons, so it's already getting silly anyway. But I think what we're going to do as a, as a simple solution is we understand that we can't really force fluff. So we're yes. going to live with it being unfluffy in terms of... Sure. But what we're going to do is basically make everybody, every codex, uh, as a... Uh, 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 what's it? <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. Is uh, not Battle Brothers. Uh, or anything. Allies of Convenience. Allies of Convenience. So basically, everyone, every codex is an ally of convenience to everyone else. You being Imperial has no benefit. You being Tau has no benefit. What this does is it lets you do the cynical thing you want to do, which is take your ally slot and go, okay, I'll take an HQ and the things that I want and add them to my existing list. But that way, you're only going to be farming effective units and there's no real synergy between the armies. So if you, know, you just want Tiki. Ty and Dev Centurions and Five Scouts, you can do that. I'm not using, uh, you know, Stealth Suit or Tetra Homing Beacons to guide drop pods exactly, full of exactly. Dev Centurions. And you're not using Tiggy to buff your tower. You're yes. using Tiggy to buff oh, them. God. Yes. So, the thought too as well is with people like Jay, who's a good person, oh. it would open up the ability to do some really interesting count as allies, where you're doing a mix of probably an effective unit, because we are competing and, you know, being cynical, but at the same time you can dress it up to be a bit more palatable. Yeah. So there's Mechanica stuff we were looking at, which is interesting. Yeah, that could be all kinds of stuff. Absolutely, and I think that's that's fine. If I was going to do something, I would at least dress it up to be interesting, either you know, sure. in the Imperial you as know, well, and a lot cool. can be said for when effort is shown. And yeah. Someone said, hey, look at this ally unit I made. There are all this alien race I came up with, or some faction of, you know, some cult of whatever. What? It's your own IP, something you've made. It's like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that, especially. That goes a long way, I think. I, I agree, and I think when when people at least are showing something different and unique, I mean, we've seen so many great Countess armies over the years. Uh, what was his name? Mars Attacks Demon Army? Uh, Dykowicz. Yeah, that was, that was brilliant. Name. Yeah. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a Demon's Army. It plays like a Demon's Army, but it, yeah. it's modeled to be like the, the Mars Attacks great. He's got blood letters with ray guns, and they have the horns brilliant. taken off, and they look like aliens. He's got dudes and flying saucers as heralds. It was fantastic. There was uh, uh, our Kelly's like Canadian, Canadian, yeah. Ross and the model yeah. after the Canadian forces. Yeah. I think he used to be a colonel. 
Yeah. Uh, there's who else did? Um, oh, I'm gonna forget his name. He was always doing Countdown Armies. He's one of the moderators on Games Over There. What's his name? Manchester. Manchester, right? That that is Ryan. That's Doug. Oh, Doug. Yeah. Okay, same yeah. guy. Same guy. Yeah. He has done. Uh, same guy who did the Mars Attacks. He's yes. done all sorts of stuff. He had Grot Rebellion. He does. Oh yeah, stuff. that's right. Yeah. He was doing Eldar at one point, but there was like an alien race that was different, right? Oh shit. Because he did that right. for Capital. Yeah, man. So yeah, we want we want people to be creative. We understand that the story will suffer a little bit, but if we can try and treat more of the codexes equally, I think no matter what, there's codex imbalance, right? Oh yeah. So there's gonna oh, be the top yeah. codexes no matter what. Oh yeah. But we just want to avoid the super heavy stuff, and th there's a lot of issues with super heavy. There's plenty of them are benign. It's it's a lot of it's spacing and other considerations. Oh for sure. Some of these things take up way too much of the they're, table, they're big, and you have to accommodate for them, and then all of a sudden. Oh, my night tight My baby can't go there. Well, now that it can go there, it can obliterate everything in that area. It, it's, you know, it's 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 slippery some, slope. It's somewhat balanced, but yeah, slippery slope. Um, we are allowing Lords of War, who are characters, so they can't be a super heavy. They can't be a monster creature. As long as that's the case, good to go. Um, we're not doing formations. I understand technically assassins are a formation, but we we finagled that a little bit. The reason we're not doing formations is because they're just ridiculous. Um, I think we all saw when the Marines got their exclusive online super kill is drop. The gladius and, one, or is this no? The gladius else? is just part of the problem. This is the one where you can automatically come down, oh, turn right. one with two dev squads, and have all these extra rules for free, oh. and be able to charge with the assault squads. And the bottom line is, in my opinion, at least, I think the formations are are only not only but are helping Marines, Eldar, the top books, the a stuff lot that more sells. Else. The stuff that sells. That's the sad part about it. And I don't think, you know, random armies having three hive tyrants is, is flying hive tyrants is doing anyone any favors. I don't think having random knights everywhere is doing anyone any favors. Where's all the crazy orc formations that have fixed their army, you know? Like, no. no Worse no. them up from our orcs. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, we want to do a 1650 game that plays fast. Um, because troops aren't super incentivized, as you see both are listed, the minimum two troops. I don't think it's the end of the world. We both have expensive stuff in low model counts. Yeah. And towards the end there, I mean, very quickly you can do the math and go, is it even possible to pull out a, 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 a tie or yeah. a minor win or a yeah. loss, you know? And, and I like that because it plays fast. It started, the speed started ramping up really quickly. Yeah. 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 Once the causality is in play, once you have those few key things that either go one way or they don't. And I think that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the end game causality matter. We're trying to make it where it may come down to a few roles. You know, that's you the best game, man. Yep. When it comes down to like it's unforgiving. You can't make mistakes. You can't forget. Things. I almost wish this game was closer, but yeah. Well, if they were this, if you you roll a one, yeah, right? oh, yeah. Any other roll, a two or more, I wouldn't have had four VP. I would have had zero. Yes. VP. No, you so, had one from Linebreaker. Oh no, he's no, dead. No, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. So, yeah. Dead. so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so I went from yeah. having zero essentially to having four because you you failed a two plus a two plus yeah so this is the kind of shit we're talking there you about. go i did yeah it's it's the the total opposite of gotta catch them all pokemon it's the total opposite of yeah everyone playing this maelstrom lottery thing where it's like well, what would your game go i don't know i got more battle points than the other guys so i guess i was a better general a huge yeah. part about it is the amount of terrain we use too yes and yeah the varying heights and stuff i just don't like seeing these open fields and, no. and i'm a towel player people like that's that's also part of the balance too, right? That's no fun for me to just sit there and shoot fish in a barrel. I mean, that's why everyone hates dabs. They're all playing on boards with no terrain. Of course, they're right? Get into combat. Uh, and you do some tactics and maneuvering in there. All of a sudden, it gets different. But it's it's good that you brought it up because again, at the tournament, the kind of setups you're seeing is what we'd be going for. Our style of terrain, yes. a lot of it, it would play smart, no melting yes. through shit. So pathing is everything. Oh, walking yeah. is everything. Maneuvering is everything. Sure. And yeah, I mean, it just comes down to. Um, you know, do you end with a, a blade on your opponent's neck, or is he, you know, yeah. is, he, is he close, does he come back? Um, the other thing, too, we're doing is to get a, a major, I think, what was it, you have to have uh, oh, yeah, at yeah. least, at four? least uh, five, I think, five. five more VP than your opponent in a major. So one to four is a minor, and that's also intentional because there aren't that many secondary VPs in play. There's the normal three, there's Linebreaker, First Blood, Warlord. But there's also uh, uh, warlord traits and certain characters yeah. that can that can augment that, like with your extra yeah. VP from the assassin. So the nice thing about the way we're doing it is it leaves a bit more breathing room for those secondaries. Yeah, half the missions we're seeing now have so many fucking ways of scoring that oh. like like we're just playing two different games against each other. I understand yeah. that was intended to balance very very different armies, 
But we're sort of going, no, no, no. Are you referring to Maelstrom at this point? Well, Maelstrom and a lot of those progressive missions sure. types where, you know, right. my shitty army can still beat your good army because mm -hmm. we're playing different games, which I don't get the point of that personally. I'd rather just not have knights be in the tournament than try and cater things to, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Also, the, the, you know, kill point nonsense. <clears throat> so, yes. yeah, we're, we're going with, okay, there aren't that many VPs in play. They vary. I mean, this was the lowest VP one. There are three objectives in play. That's so right. VP, and then we have secondaries. And, yeah, comes down to that. You so, really got to fight for those objectives. You really got to commit to what yeah. you're doing. You know, you have to think ahead. There's none of this, like, oh, what am I doing right now? Like, it's And that's the other brilliance with thinking ahead. When you know, you know it's ending on turn five, that's something else we're doing because we only have two-hour rounds. That's, that's right. That's worth noting, yeah. We, we go to every player, and it's like, listen, there's no slow play. There's no thinking. You're, you're moving. You're shooting. You're rolling. There's thinking, but... No, no, you're thinking while well, moving. Thinking, uh, yeah. I'm moving my one, two, three, four crew. As I'm moving these crew for exactly. the next 30 seconds, I'm going to think about that. You're be thinking what you're doing. But you're while playing you're fast, you're not playing. slow playing, and the expectation of everyone is the game ends on turn five. Yes. If it goes shorter, obviously we don't want to have it where one person ever gets more than one turn, but the expectation is very clear. Oh, that's the worst thing ever in tournaments. Yeah. When Buddy's like, you know, running his cultists or something in the back and you're like I just need to take some shots you know like we, we want to make sure everyone gets their full turn yeah. out and that's the other thing too we want you to look at this format and go okay this is what's being incentivized this is the vibe make something that will work for this we really don't want people with 300 model count fucking armies complaining that we're being a bit too mean with them no we yeah. don't want we don't want I mean, two turns of a game there are different the there's all these different tournaments to go to I'm not saying you know if you don't like it don't go to ours but it's the that's almost the gist of it. I mean, you, you got. I had a thirty model count army. You had a forty one model count. Yeah, you know, you just plays fast. You you adjust. Yeah, you know. Uh, our movement phases were like two minutes. You know what I mean? Not like thirty five because we're fucking you know stretching it all out. So yeah, that's really the hope with the format is it's it's taking seventh edition and making it as fifth as we can make it basically without yeah. getting too much into it. Yeah, exactly. Without changing too many rules, things like that. Like, just, yeah. just a few things here now. Not even really much. Here and there. Yeah. Um, switching gears to the eventual shit talking on 40k. <laughs> um, so it still seems like the trajectory is like the age of say barring of stuff. I I think it'll bother me because I look at the people who bought into end times and it's like oh, so thank you for selling me these very expensive books. Like what the fuck days was before you were destroying my game. Like, yeah, what was that about? Like they did they release wasn't there like campaigns and stuff and all these things? Like I wish I knew more about it. Yeah. But I do know that if the plan is to AOS like forty K after selling us all these fucking rules that you're not even curating well or, or, or answering any questions about. And answering a question about a rule has nothing to do with competitive play. At all. You could both be fluff bunnies, you both have no problem four plusing it every time, but eventually you're gonna wanna fucking know how it works. Yes. Like simply put. Yeah. You know what, I can 4 plus it for a month, but eventually give me a fucking FAQ, right? So I don't know, they can't They can't keep saying premium product, premium product, but then when you critique the rules, Jervis goes, well, you're, you play wrong. Oh, thanks, Jervis. Thanks for that. You know, just because we don't eat yeah. hours to do a fucking scenario every yeah, Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't mean we play wrong. You know, I don't want to play D-Day every single time. We've yeah. done it. We've done those those historic scenarios that aren't balanced, and the end is what we all think. Oh, yeah, that side of the huge advantage one. And it was a fun 10-hour day, Yeah. but like you're not fucking raring to go and do it next weekend. You know? exactly. <laughs> At least I'm not, especially yeah. on the losing side, right? Yeah. That's it just feels like a, a big space hulk game, right? Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, I, I really hope they don't uh, age of Sigmar 40k, but I don't know, yeah, maybe the way it's going, maybe not. Who knows, man? Who knows? On the positive news, it seems like there's going to be plastics for 30k or, or some kind of box set, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, lots of people are going to be loving that. Here's hoping it's not that stupid expensive. No, God. Well, we want it, so okay. probably. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> what else can I tell you? We're going to be doing some 30K coming up. So we've got a 2,000 point battle report in the works. It's going to be uh, myself playing as always, count as something or other. It'll be Death Watch counting <laughs> as uh, Iron Hands in this case. But some cool new models in the mix. Uh, I got a, uh, my Count As Perth Rabo Forge Lord dude painted, so he'll be up going. And Clarence uh, is currently painting up, uh, what's that thing called? The oh, big, big oh uh, is it the Spartan? Spartan, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Spartan Assault Tank. This giant. is Sparta. This is Sparta. So this is madness. I may have to deal with that, and that'll be fun. And it has a flare shield in 30K, so yay. 
But uh, yeah, madness. <laughs> look forward to that, guys. We'll be, we'll be doing more battle reports with this format and telling more about it uh, in Definitely. episodes to come. Uh, we're also going to maybe eventually, uh, people on DAC have been suggesting we maybe do some kind of opening sequence, so we'll work on that. That's a cool idea. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Well, so uh, with, without further ado, we'll let you go, Internet. Uh, have a good see time. See you later. Thanks for watching. Don't, uh, don't threaten anybody or, or, or in any way criticize anyone because it's harassment. Yeah.